the dahlias have just started flowering and as I have already guided you on how to get your dahlias started I thought I'd continue that series with how to now harvest your flowers so that you get the maximum blooms for from each plant. So as you can tell from my blooms, something's been munching on them. So what I'm gonna do to start with is clear out the bottom leaves. Um, we don't need them quite so much at the bottom now. Um, the flowers, all of the energy can go into producing the flowers. So I'm gonna clear out the bottom leaves so it creates a bit of air and space and hopefully prevents a bit more of the I'm going to say caterpillar action because I did find the caterpillar early on it um, and see whether we can stop that. As I say, these are the first flowers of the season, so we'll be getting lots more. So I'm not being too precious about a few little nibbles on some flowers at the current time, but I don't want every single flower to be eaten. So we need to take a bit of care. So I'm clearing out the bottom leaves. Let's do that first. So to clear the base of the stems, it's just a matter of clearing off that lower leaves. Just snap them off. As you can see, the leaves are already dying. So you're not really harming the plant by doing this, but you are giving it a bit of space to grow. So at this point in time, you're trying to focus the plant's energy into flower production and not leaf production. Really, you're looking for five stems per tuber. So if you've got more, you don't need them. They are just going to drain the plant of energy. So snap them off. So I've had a good clear out at the bases so that um, it's got some fresh air in there. To maximise your flowers, you really need to stay on top of the deadheading um, because the more you pick your flowers, the more flowers you will get. So dahlias are very much a cut and come again flower. So we're here in the middle of August and they've just started flowering and I can expect these flowers to continue until the first frosts. So they will flourish throughout the next few months. So they are definitely worth their space in the garden. Um, and to do that, to make sure you keep, get as many flowers as you can, as I say, you need to deadhead them. Now, hopefully, <laughs> you're picking your flowers anyway. So if, if this is in a, a garden environment, so you're wanting the flowers to be the best they can be in the garden to look at from afar, then absolutely deadheading is the way to go. But if you're like me, having the dahlias in a cutting patch, then actually you just need to cut the flowers and then there's no deadheading to do. <laughs> Saving you time and effort. What I find easiest is to pick a day of the week and cut all of the flowers in bloom on that day and by the next week you will have more. So that's the easiest to go through all of your garden, pick the flowers on that day, and then of, of the come and, cut and come again varieties, and you will get more for your effort for doing that. But if you do need a dead head, then obviously you need to be able to identify what bud is a dead head <laughs> and which one is a new bud because they are all fairly similar. 
let me show you the difference. If you want to identify which buds you need to deadhead and which ones you need to keep because they'll flower, then this is a good example of what you're looking for. In this one here, it's kind of conical compared to this one here, which is spherical, <laughs> easy for me to say. So where they come out into a point, that is a dead head. That's a used and spent flower. So that one means that one has already flowered, so he's good to go. This one is yet to flower, so keep it. So what we do is find the end and cut it out. And in this instance, we need to, when you're cutting off the dead head, you need to go right back to where it joins the stem, so where there's two out shoots. So potentially, these two shoots here can form new flowers. So we want to cut it off as a minimum right down at the bottom there, like that. Another trick that florists or growers that are florists does is debud the flowers. Um, personally, I've never found the need to do that because I'm just growing once for a vase once a week and I just pick the flowers once a week. So it's whatever's in flower and whatever's looking good. I don't need to um, focus the energy on producing a perfect bloom for a particular time. So I've never needed to do that, but let me show you what debudding is. Debudding is a trick that growers often use to get really perfect blooms. So if they have a particular time in mind that they want a perfect bloom for, then they would cut off any competing blooms. In this instance, we have a flower ready to bloom. That'll be out in maybe two or three days. We've got two extra blo blooms. And actually this one here is also part of this one stem. So in theory, what they would do in order for this flower to flower better, they would cut off at the very least this bud here. So that then stops this bud competing with this bud. But in order to get a good stem length, then they'd want to be cutting it all the way down here. So all of these extra blooms will be equally competing. That seems very strange. <laughs> I don't know what's happening there. We'll be competing with this particular flower. So in order to make sure that this one flowers well, rather than the plant making sure that all of these flowers form at some point, they would take off all these buds and just leave the flowers that they want. As a home gardener, I'm not so bothered about that. So I may not want individual flowers ready at any point in time. I'm just happy to take what I've got when it's ready. So I will leave these buds on because it gives me a second bite at the cherry, so to speak. So this may be over before I get round to picking it. But this one could be coming up and be in perfect state by then. So whilst I don't really need to be precious about when I need the flowers, I won't bother debudding. Unlike tulips or antirrhinums or 
larkspur or any of those other flowers that continue opening up once they are cut dahlias will not do that so they will stay as they are once they're cut so what you want to be looking for is a flower as you want to see it in your arrangement so ideally you're looking for the flower to be as fully open as possible so in this instance this one is more open than this one this one will not open anymore if I cut it so I would be better off leaving that one but I could take that one because it's quite good at the moment. You can also look at the back to see how much how rounded it is and filled out at the back to make sure that it's fully open there. The openness of the flower is a little bit more obvious on these dinner plate dahlias so as you can see this flower has still got quite a tight bud on it so it's not fully open whereas if we scroll over there and look at the cafe au lait it's more opened up in the center of the flower so that one would be ready whereas i would say this one isn't however on this same plant we have another flower and this still has the center closed but if you look, these petals have seen better days. So that is debatable on this particular plant, whether this, this flower is good to go or whether it will open anymore. I'm tempted to cut it like that, given the state of these ones, but um, that's a good indication. Different types of dahlias will show different types of opening but nevertheless they will not open once they're cut and therefore cutting them in the condition that you want to display them is essential. When you're cutting your flowers, you want them to be with the longest stem length possible. So in this instance, we actually have got a good stem, good stem length. So it, before it joins the, the stem where all of the other buds are coming out, we have got it to there. So let me just take that and that for a dahlia is a reasonable stem length. Ideally, if you were a perfectionist, you'd want more than that. Um, so you could go right back into the plant more than you think would be, would be wise and cut it up there. The, the stems will, or new shoots will grow from every leaf node. So there's no need to worry about losing your flowers. However, at this point in time, if I do that, I would lose these flowers as well, which isn't what I want to do. <laughs> so um, I'm gonna leave that there. But the aim is to get the longest stem length as possible. And once you have cut the flower, give it a good shake to get rid of any bugs that might be on it because um, they, they can get really into um, the petals. These tight formed dahlias don't tend to have so many critters in them because they're difficult to climb into but something more open so like the cafe au lait they are likely to have many more critters in them because um, they've got more open petal structure. So I've cut the flower that I showed you earlier that looks a bit dead and in doing so you'll see that the stem length 
is quite a bit shorter. So for a head that size and that same length, it was never going to be viable for a vase unless you're displaying them singly, which they can look beautiful in an, a stem vase by themselves. Why wouldn't you want to do that? But what I've done by cutting that is sacrifice this bud here, which actually was a reasonable set stem length. So, you know, you have to pick and choose which ones you want, but never be frightened to cut them because they will keep growing more shoots and you'll get more flowers. And actually, the deeper you cut them down, the more longer stems you'll get with the flowers on. So don't be afraid to do that. We are at the beginning of the season and so all of the flowers are on short stems because they've only just started going and I haven't cut any. This is just starting to go. So once I start cutting back all these flowers, then I will eventually get longer stems that are more useful for an arrangement. And if we look at this one, I mean it's definitely gone. The petals aren't falling off but it's not something that you'd want to display. It may be that we can pull out some of these. Ooh. Well it won't help now that I've bent the stem but we can pull out some of these grottier looking flowers and because it's such a big head it still could look quite spectacular in an arrangement but the stem length is key for that. I could still, <laughs> I've now bent that, I could easily snip that off at the diagonal, obviously, <laughs> and put that in a bud vase and just admire it as it is. Nothing wrong with that, I don't think. When you are cutting, make sure you cut with clean snips and plunge them straight away into clean water so that the vessels within the stems start taking up the water as soon as possible. You don't want any blockages on those stems because of dirt. So the clean water, clean snips and get them into the water ASAP and they will last longer. I'm playing around with these now and it's killing me because I need to put them into water so they're gonna be dying quicker because I've messed around with them. Now I've only cut two stems here <laughs> Um, and that's because I am cutting it at the completely wrong time of the day. It is early afternoon, it's warm, <laughs> it's UK and it's warm, there's, there's a change. Um, and so it shouldn't re I shouldn't really be cutting them at all at this point in time. I should be waiting to e cut them in the cool of the evening or in the cool of the morning. Cutting at this time of day will not be beneficial for your, the vase life of these flowers. So that's all I'm going to cut here at this point in time. I'll come back this evening and have a cut, good cut through of all of the flowers that are reasonable, even if it's just short stems, so I can clear out the way and we can get into a regular routine so that I can cut once a week and have the flowers ready to go on that week. So I will cut everything that is reasonable at this point in time. Now the two that were shown before, so the other ones that were in this time. So this one was ready, the other wasn't. That is only gonna take a couple of days for those to come. So if I cut this time next week to cut these flowers, then they will be past their best. So I may just cut them now and make use of them as they are rather than having to deadhead them next week. <laughs> the choice is yours. But that's it. It may seem complicated with dahlias, but really it isn't. All you have to do is keep picking. And that's it. The more you cut, the further down you cut, then the more flowers they will produce. 
So don't be scared, just cut them and you'll have flowers from now right through to the first frosts. Let me know what dahlias, in the comments below, what dahlias are your favourites. At the current time, I'm thinking this Milen, Milen, Milena Fleur, Milena Fleur is really rather special. They will fit into an arrangement well for the size. The colours are spectacular. I love the peachy colours, which are similar to this Penhill Dark Monarch, which equally I love the colours, but the head is just a little bit more challenging. <laughs> but actually, they go quite well together. So that and the Princess Elizabeth, I think I might now have a nice arrangement with those come tomorrow morning. Mm -hmm.